Still says starting, still says starting, still says starting. Looks like I'm connected to both YouTube and Instagram. And as soon as it stops saying starting, then I will... There we go. Now that is live on YouTube and Instagram. And let me put my two windows up side by side so I can answer questions and see responses. There's one. There's the other one. I'm not sure where the comments would show up on that little screen, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. If some show up, then we'll know. And if not, so far, there's nobody on that stream. All right. Good morning. It is Sunday morning. It is. We are live, and this is Sunday morning live with Ron. I'm going to get a little bit closer than usual today because I'm not sure that my remote uh, access, my remote microphone here is working correctly. So, here we go. Uh, Lee is asking to see some pretty pictures, so that's what we're going to jump right into. Uh, as usual on this show, I'm going to show you this week I've got five pictures that are coming in uh, new to the gallery this week. And we'll show you those. We'll talk a little bit about uh, camera technique, how you can take better pictures. And then we'll talk about what I'm doing uh, and the camera that I'm using to shoot right now. Remember last week we talked about the Canon PowerShot 720. Uh, you can see that in on my YouTube channel, uh, which I will post the link in uh all of the platforms here. Uh, and then uh, today we're going to talk about my uh, Sony A6000. But first, let's get to some pictures because Lee's chomping at the bit. All right. So this week's pictures. The first one is called, Now Who Left That There? Okay. This is actually... This is my version of those automated animations that they do with your pictures. See how it scrolls across the screen. Now, who left this there? This is a piece in the De Young Museum, and I have to apologize. The next time I am there, I will get all the information, and I will add the description. I don't know the name of the piece. I don't know the name of the piece in front of it, and I don't know the name of the two young ladies who look like they're getting hollered at by their dad. But this one is, now who left that there? It's from the De Young Museum, uh, which is in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, uh, which is near where I live. Uh, very nice place. Uh, they have, uh, once a month, when they open back up again, they have free days. If you live in any of the Bay Area counties, uh, you can go on certain days of the month. And they're weekends, they're not just like Tuesdays, uh, but there are certain Saturdays in the month that you can go in and you can actually go see the whole uh, museum for free. Uh, very nice eclectic collection. Uh, as you can see, glass, sculpture, paintings, old masters, modern art, uh, a very fun museum. All right, piece number two. Piece number two is called, let me get this so the light aren't shining on it. You'll have to bear with me. I did not get my pictures mounted this week. Uh, it's a little bit slow. But this one's called Just Slightly Bent. This is from Todos Santos Plaza, which is here in Concord, which is actually the town that I am in. Uh, Concord, California. They have a central town square. And they call it Todos, Todo Santos Plaza. Plaza. And in that plaza is a nice big square, and they've got a stage, and they've got, uh, uh, they hold concerts there. Uh, I always make it for the last Thursday night concert in October, before they close for the season, uh, is a, a Pink Floyd cover band playing Dark Side of the Moon with a laser light show in the trees 
in the park, underneath the moon, underneath the stars. That's a lot of fun. This particular day, uh, I had just gotten my new Sony A6000. I went down uh, as part of one of the courses that I'm learning from, that I do learn from. Uh, they suggested that we use an app on our phone called Photo 365 Challenge or something like that. Let me just bring it up quick. Uh, there we go. Learn Photo 365. Okay. And one of the things that it does is... Where am I? There it is. Okay. So Learn Photo 365. So one of the things that it does is it will give you assignments for either 52 weeks or 12 months or 365 days. Uh, no, 365 days, 52 weeks or 30 days. Okay. And uh, one of the other features it has is scavenger hunt and that's actually what I used here is scavenger hunt where it tells you go take a picture of this and then I have to find something in the environment where I am and take a picture of that uh, that particular picture was find something broken so uh, once again just a little bit bent Taken in Toto Santos Plaza back in December. Okay. And that was my picture of something broken from uh, that photo 365 challenge. The next piece. This is a similar piece to a piece that's already on my uh, site. And this one is called Foggy Coast Three of Many. I have a whole series of photos, of which this is the third, that are going to be my Foggy Coast series. Now, I live, obviously, fairly close to the Pacific Ocean. San Francisco is known for fog, so I get a chance to do a bunch of Foggy Coast pictures. So, uh, it's suggested you're supposed to have a specialty, so... This is my first attempt at a specialty, the Foggy Coast series. Uh, I like the little kayakers there. Let's see if I can get this in the center so Instagram doesn't lose anything. Uh, the kayakers there uh, in front of the rocks on a foggy morning. Rockaway Beach, Pacifica. Uh, went down there in the fall on a hike, and it was a foggy morning. Uh, it barely burned off before it started rolling back in. That's what it does in Pacifica. Sorry about that. And so that's the story behind that picture. Of course, it's springtime, so you have to have flowers in springtime. This week's flower picture is called a spiral of love. And it's just a red rose. Uh, I was learning how to do things and uh, trying to make the back blurry uh, and it worked pretty well. Um, this actually, I believe, is an iPhone picture so you won't find it very large on the website uh, because of the limitations of the sensor size on the iPhone, but it's a, I like the way the picture came out. And I was able, in post-processing, uh, to make that rose really stand out from the background and make him look like he really pops there. Uh, so, again, a spiral of love. I uh, actually took this at the Half Moon Bay Pumpkin Festival last fall. One of the joys of being living here in Northern California is that we have roses almost all year round uh, maybe uh, January and February some bushes 
may not produce, but there's usually a variety producing roses almost all the time. So anywhere you go, there's always flowers. Uh, speaking of which, I went by my favorite house in the neighborhood lately. They have a huge cactus, uh, two of them, in their front yard. Uh, and last year, uh, for about a day, these cactuses just blew up with these huge, huge flowers. And I walked by there the other day on a walk, uh, which I'm doing more of since I'm stuck at home. Uh, and on that walk, I noticed I went specifically by this house and uh, sure enough that cactus is budding up so we'll get some good pictures of the cactus flowers this year I promise and then for our fifth picture last picture of the week uh, we're going back to Prague all right this one is titled one spire is never enough one of the things that struck me about Prague in particular was um, because it was spared pretty much during World War II, a lot of old public buildings still exist. And old public in buildings in Prague mostly meant churches, as they did in much of the older parts of Central Europe, Central and Western Europe that I was traveling through uh, but in Prague in particular there are a lot of these very sort of fairy tale type church spires uh, where they had extra spires off to the side of them so but when you look at this Prague skyline it is just full full of spires like this uh, this particular one was taken uh, from my boat trip on the Viltava River. Uh, one of my secrets in traveling is I always like to take a, a boat trip uh, when, early on when I get somewhere. Uh, one, it gives me a sense of perspective of history. Most large cities that are built on water are there because of the water. So it makes sense to me to get on a boat and see the city from the water because that's really the way it developed uh, and Prague was no exception there's just some beautiful beautiful spots and you've already seen a couple of them that's another one so those are our five pictures this week so once again they are now who left that there and Just a little bent. Just a little bent. Uh, the third guy is Foggy Coast, three of many. There he is. Let's get the glare off. Again, I apologize for not getting those mounted this week. I just could not get my act together. A spiral of love. Now, next week, we're going to have some technology changes. Uh, again, I didn't have time to finish hooking everything up. But I'll be able to do that all that nifty stuff of shifting between actually showing these on the screen uh, so that I don't have these flimsy papers uh, and me talking. So uh, look for new technology next week. Not because you asked for it, but just because I'm a geek and geeks love new technology. Um, so, those are the five pictures. What's the second thing I promised? I second, second thing I promised was that... So, Lee, did those count as pretty pictures this week? I always have to get approval. Uh, I have to uh, tell you how to take better pictures. So last week we talked about the technique of holding your camera with your elbows in, braced against your body, all right, either here by the lens if you've got a lens you can hold on to, if not, by both sides with your iPhone, okay, with your smartphone you can hold on to both sides like that, take a picture, if you're right-handed you take a picture like that, uh, 
tricky, huh? Uh, or like this, okay? But try to get your elbows tucked in, okay? But sometimes you want to take pictures. The light is bad. Light is low. Uh, sunrises, sunsets, inside shots. Uh, those types of things. Uh, now, admittedly, modern cameras do a really good job of adjusting. Uh, they do the best they can, but sometimes they just have to go to a slower shutter speed in order to get enough light to take a picture. So when they do that, it's very, very difficult, even in that braced position, to hold your camera still enough for a half a second, a second, two seconds, which is what your camera can do sometimes. In that case, what you need is a tripod, okay? So this is my travel tripod. We looked at him briefly last week, all right? It's called a tripod because it's tri, three, pod, legs, okay? And it will have your tripod. Ooh, we're getting flickering on our lights here. I think there's power fluctuations in the neighborhood and the LEDs don't like that, so I apologize. But your tripod will come with some sort of head on it, okay? It's only when you get to the really, really expensive wings things that you have to buy a head separate from the stand itself. Go out and get a, a nice little travel tripod. Uh, this one is aluminum. It's an X-Tech XH50 TRS, fresh off of Amazon. Okay, I bought this last summer uh, to go to Europe with. It's got a little screw plate here. That screw plate will screw into the bottom of your camera. We'll see that when we look at the camera in a second. I liked this one because it weighs nothing. All right. And then just watch. Just watch how small this will get. I take the three legs, and they're just most portable ones are like this. There's no screw knobs, no anything. There's just the lever. You flip the lever up, it releases. Everything telescopes, okay, and when this is not doing that, so without this big part on here, which is an iPhone holder, all right, uh, so when I'm using it for my actual cameras, uh, they work with a plate, so there's just another little plate, probably about as thick as that, that sits on the top. So that whole thing fits into my day pack, okay? And it still weighs next to nothing. I highly, highly recommend it. Now, I don't use it all the time, but when I needed it, it was invaluable to be able to take pictures of churches and spires and uh, all that marvelous night light stuff that you see people taking pictures of, I highly recommend a tripod. So this is my little travel one. Uh, my real one isn't that much heavier. Now he's got the camera on him, so I'm gonna be careful with him. Uh, but this is my real one. But as you can see, he's quite a bit taller which means that he doesn't fold down as far, okay? And today, uh, I gotta spread the legs a little bit to make this go down. Uh, no room, no room, no room. There we go. Put this, come on, down you go. There's actually physical lips there that I have to clear. There. Well, we will see that eventually. Right. Let me get this out. Uh, but I'll show you how that folds up in a second. There it goes. All right. 
Now that other little tripod had that same telescoping feature, but again, because it's a smaller tripod, okay, so there's the size of that folded up. And actually, it's going to be similar in size, okay, because this also fits in my day pack. This weighs probably two to three times as much as this, but it's also a lot steadier, okay. This A6000 is a lot heavier camera than my uh, little Canon was. So, and you'll notice here on this head, all right, this particular one is by Votilon, okay, that's the, this particular uh, relatively low cost, but you'll see this has much more sophisticated adjustments. Rather than just grabbing a handle, you can loosen this up, and that loosens up the ball joint, okay? And then on the side, there's a separate adjustment that allows you to loosen it up so that you can turn it side to side, okay? And then the way it actually works is it, too, has a screw plate, all right? And... It came with this quick release. You see how easy that was? Boom, boom. I'm done. I screw that side thing in a little bit. That's locked in place. Okay, and won't fall off of the tripod. Now, the tripod can still tip over and hurt your camera. But so that's the next trip for taking next tip for taking steady pictures is to use a tripod. All right, so it's, it, this one came with that funky base, uh, which works really well for quick release, okay? And you see there's a plate right here on the bottom of my camera that screws in to the hole in the bottom of my camera so I can release it quickly, okay? Now with my EOS, I actually had to screw it onto this little guy or it's not an EOS, it's a power shot. With my power shot, I had to screw this onto this guy. That being said, all right, I've almost made 30 minutes already, and I still want to talk about my uh, Sony A6000, so this probably will be a few episodes. Uh, there are entire YouTube channels dedicated to this specific camera, but let me tell you why I picked it. One, uh, you may have heard me mention that I had, uh, was in Prague and took a tour that was supposed to be a photo tour uh, with a uh, professional photographer in Prague. And it was indeed that, except I was the only person on the tour. So uh, I got to have every single one of my shots critiqued by a professional photographer. Uh, he helped my techniques a good deal. Uh, you definitely see, that's why you don't see many pictures of Munich. Because uh, my pictures in Munich didn't come out really well. Uh, I'm still trying to find some of those that I can resurrect. But, that being said, this is the camera that he recommended. Why? First off, it is a true interchangeable lens camera okay this lens I don't do it often but there's no breeze this morning so this lens comes off okay and I also have a telephoto lens and we'll go over the lenses on another episode uh, so it's interchangeable lens uh, the lenses that work on this camera work on the whole Sony e-mount series Okay, so I can have lenses that will take me into better cameras. Uh, it, just like on my power shot, it, it has multiple modes. Okay, it is relatively lightweight. Now you'll notice that my, many, and this is changing, uh, many digital cameras will be 
thick, like the old film cameras, okay? Their body will be this thick. And that's because they use a technology called single lens reflex. And the reflex means there's a mirror that when they look in the viewfinder, that they're actually seeing through a mirror the optical image outside the camera. And then when they hit, click the shutter, the mirror flips up, the shutter opens and closes, and then the mirror flip back, flips back down. So if you've ever taken a picture with an SLR camera, either film or digital, uh, you'll see that when you take the picture, there's a blip, okay, where you can't see what's going on, and that's when the camera actually sees. With this camera, there is no mirror. Hence, it can be much smaller and much lighter. And you'll recall that those were two of the criteria for my choice of uh, that Canon when I was going to Europe. This, with its spare lens, with my uh, sturdier tripod, all still fit in my day pack. And I can pack an apple and some snacks and my umbrella in there as well. So uh, this works for what I do. Uh, I would not carry a big heavy camera. I just can't see myself doing that. I'm too lazy to do it. So we've got the Sony a6000. It's called mirrorless. Okay, because it doesn't use that mirror technology. When I what I'm looking at actually has all of the settings of the camera applied. So I'm seeing the picture that's actually going to be taken by the sensor. Okay. Even when I put my eye up to the viewfinder, that's the picture. I'm actually seeing a digital image, just like the sensor is going to pick up when it trips the shutter. Okay. Very, very good camera. The other reason for this camera is this camera model is about seven or eight years old now we're taking this in 2020 uh it's been around for a while it doesn't have all of the greatest bells and whistles but it has more bells and whistles than i know how to use but uh but it doesn't have all the latest and greatest okay uh it is uh, about 20, about 32 megapixels. Okay, so it's better than the 20 or so that I had on the on the Canon, but uh, so that I've got more resolution. It will shoot in RAW, which is a camera format where it just doesn't make any judgments. It just records the digital data. Now. If a lot of the point-and-shoot cameras, including my Canon, uh, will only shoot in JPEG. And in JPEG, things get compressed. And the camera makes decisions on what's the best color, what's the best everything. In RAW, when you look at a RAW photo, uh, just undeveloped, unprocessed, they look very, very flat. And that's because it's made no judgments. So you really have to process RAW photos. But you have a lot more there to work with. And because you have a lot more there, it also allows you, when you go to the store, to get bigger prints. Okay? So, that's our show today. We're going to talk some more about the Sony a6000, what it does, uh, and why I like it. Uh, in future episodes, uh, we talked about our five new pictures. One Spire is Never Enough. Spiral of Love, get him right side up, Spiral of Love, Foggy Coast 3 of Many, Just a Little Bit, and now who left that there? I have a homework assignment on this one, I have to go find out who the actual artist is on that piece, on both of those pieces, uh, and get that information into the website as well. Visit the website. Uh, uh, I want to...
congratulate uh, Kathy, who won the giveaway that I was running for Williams Limited. Williams Limited is doing a virtual festival. So just look up Williams LTD Virtual Festival. Uh, please support your uh, festival artists. Uh, these are people who usually make their money right now and can't because all the festivals are being shut down. So go there, take a look at who the vendors are, uh, and uh, buy something from them. I'm expanding my COVID-19 relief through directrelief.org. Uh, $20 of every $100 purchased on my site right now until the end of the lockdown in California uh, will go to direct relief. So uh, it started out, it was just the one piece. Now everything on the site, $20 of every $100 that you spend, I'm going to send to direct relief. Uh, there's a big sale going on right now. If you use code WFH2020, work from home 2020, 25% off anything on the site except for gift cards because I don't want you to take 25% off twice. Uh, but anything except gift cards, 25% off the entire store. You can get coffee mugs, you can get pillows, uh, you can get uh, iPhone covers. Yeah, that's one of my pieces there on an iPhone cover. Uh, also Samsung's. Uh, what else? I've got a giveaway going on for April. I will have a giveaway going on every month. If you're on my mailing list, you already are on the giveaway. And finally, uh, what's it? oh, coming up, May 9th and 10th, another one of the, uh, of the promoters and, and producers of the festivals uh, is May 9th and 10th. They're going to do a live virtual festival. I'm not sure all of the details of what that is, uh, but... Right now, I'm thinking I'm actually going to have my festival booth set up on my front lawn. Uh, and I will do a virtual festival for my neighborhood. Uh, I'll promote it in next door. Uh, if you're in the Concord area, you would be able to drive by and wave. Obviously, we can't get together and talk story. Uh, but I can bring you and show you individual pieces. Uh, if you want to know what to preview, there's a Fair and Festival Images Gallery on my website, uh, and you can see all of the images there. And I guess that's about it. So I've used up all of my time, uh, and we're going to say goodbye for today. Thank you for joining us Sunday morning live with Ron, and we'll be back next week with some more pictures, some more photography tips. Uh, and talk a little bit more about uh, my camera, my process, me, 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 also me. Uh, sorry, I was watching Matrix over Easter weekend last weekend. So, thank you. Goodbye. Till next week. Have a great time. Uh, in terms of uh, last week's contest, nobody actually said which picture they liked best. So we'll try again. Tell me in the comments what picture you liked best, uh, and you will win a mounted version of all of this week's pictures. And you know what? Because nobody won last week's, I will throw in all of last week's pictures as well. So have a good one. Be safe out there. Be good to each other. Stay home. Wash your hands. Uh, smile and wave. Remember the Vulcan grip, Vulcan greeting. Bye-bye. Uh,